Okay, so welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending from which part of the world are you joining us today. It is our great pleasure to continue this tradition, tra tradition of organizing webinars in collaboration between URI Europe and Baraza, our dear partners and CC members uh, from Germany. And yeah, I'm, I'm Leila, I'm calling from Turkey. I'm URI Europe Sicily as an officer and also working for URI uh, Global Office as individual membership coordinator. And it is my great pleasure to be of your technical assistant uh, during this webinar. We are organizing it on the occasion of the World Interfaith Harmony Week. And the structure of today's webinar will be just short introduction on the topic and co-organizers of the webinar. And then we have two amazing speakers, Dr. Anke and Elizabeth. Dr. Anke joining us from Germany. She is part of the Baraza. And Elizabeth, our dear friend from Spain, who is part of ERI Europe. Um, as you already saw in invitation, we shared their biographies and some more information about webinars. So we will be discussing about cultural diversity in the context of uh, sustainable social economies. And there will be some interesting ideas shared by our speaker, which will be followed up by a short Q&A session. And I hope that yeah, you will all have something to, to share with us. So without further ado, I would like to give floor to the Rias to introduce our dear colleagues and partners from Barazan. So Rias, floor is yours. Leila, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, friends, colleagues. I thank you for being with us today for this webinar to mark the United Nations World Interfaith Harmony Week. My name is Riaz Ravat. Uh, I am the Secretary General of Baraza, which is an independent international nonprofit organization. Baraza is a Swahili word meaning council or meeting place. It is simply a place where people get together, share news, ideas, and try together to solve common problems. It is in this spirit that Baraza was formed in 2017 in Munich, Germany. Baraza is dedicated to the global promotion of peaceful thinking, tolerance in areas of culture and religion, and understanding among nations. We believe in ideals of acceptance, understanding, and coexistence. Our work is expanding all the time. We have run several programs, including seminars, conferences, courses, and events. We were responsible for the concept, planning, and delivery of the exhibition, Tolerance, Understanding, Coexistence, which is the Sultanate of Oman's message of Islam. We have created a world religions coloring book for kids, and here it is, which is available in 16 languages and has been distributed in many, many places. Our flagship life skills program is called Unity for Next Gen. Unity for Next Gen is an exciting and inspiring scheme for young people. It builds self-confidence, provides an encounter-based learning environment to create citizens who are open-minded, skilled, and resilient to face some of society's challenges. Children in India, Germany, and the UK have already benefited from this scheme, and we look to expand this further. I would very much like to thank our partner organization, URI Europe, with whom we have this tradition of marking World Interfaith Harmony Week, and they have made this possible for us. Please do follow us on Facebook and also visit our website, which is www.baraza.ngo. Thank you, and Kishan. Thank you very much, Riaz. It is always such a pleasure to collaborate with you on this. And I just put your uh, web address in the chat box so whoever is interested can take a look. There's so many very important and useful resources available on their website. And this is also an invitation to consider collaboration with Baraza if you are having some similar interests or values. Now it is my great pleasure to give floor to Angelina, my dear colleague from Bulgaria, who will be introducing URI Europe and URI overall. <laughs> yes, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar organized jointly by Baraza and URI Europe on the occasion of the World Interfaith Harmony Week, as, as we already mentioned several times. This is our third year of collaborative efforts to focus on interfaith dialogue exactly on the month of February. And it is my honor and pleasure to be together with you today on behalf of URI Europe, together with my dear colleague, Leila. I'm Angelina and I'm serving as URI Europe CC liaison officer. Uh, I'm based in Sofia, Bulgaria. 
So I would like to say a few words about URI as a co-organizer and co-host of those incredible and very valuable webinars. URI is a global grassroots interfaith network that cultivates peace and justice by engaging people to bridge religious and cultural differences and work together for the good of their communities and the world. URI is a community of cooperation circles, interfaith member groups, more than a thousand all around the world. We call those groups CCs or cooperation circles. They are self-organized and self-funded interfaith groups. And uh, they're also the core of URI. What is needed to have such a group, it is at least seven uh, people from at least three different religions, spiritual expressions or indigenous traditions, including atheists and agnostics. In Europe particularly, we have uh, 64 such groups and uh, we are ha happy uh, to have Baraza as our dear member as, and also our dear, as our dear member of URI Europe Network. Baraza is part of URI Europe for uh, around three years. And uh, for those years, we are happy uh, to collaborate with them um, to produce two editions of this incredible uh, coloring book, which Rias showed in his introduction. And also we are having a tradition, uh, this is our third year tradition to, pro to have this webinar series during the World Interfaith Harmony Week. I would like also to congratulate the new president of Baraza, Professor Dr. Anke Weber, who is one of our distinguished speaker of this evening, morning and day. And I would like also to welcome our dear friend, Elizabeth Leur, our speaker on behalf of URI Europe. And uh, Leila, back to you. Thank you very much. So this was just a short introduction from our organizers. And now we are coming to the part, to the exciting part and the reason why we all gather here today to listen to our two amazing speakers, what they have to say. So the first will be Dr. Anke Weber joining us from Germany, newly elected president of the Baraza and the university professors. So like it will took us 15 minutes to introduce her properly and share all the information from her so rich background and bio. So I will take the opportunity to paste it in the chat so that all of you can take your time to read through it. But without further ado, Dr. Anke, floor is yours and we are really looking forward to your presentation. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much, Leila, Rias and Angelina for the introduction and the warm welcome. Um, I'm very excited to be here today uh, and to have a chance to briefly talk about the topic, which I believe is very important, um, namely cultural diversity as a key factor for socially sustainable economies. Now, what I would like to do um, in the coming few minutes is to link cultural diversity on the one hand to economic activity and economic prosperity on the other hand. Um, and okay, so I'm just checking whether, yes, I'm still connected. Okay, perfect. So now you might be wondering why um, I'm attempting to do this. And well, all of us who are here today and any associates of your eye or Baraza or you know, similar organizations will readily agree that cultural diversity and interreligious and interfaith cooperation have an immense value in itself. So intercultural communication and dialogue um, and fostering understanding and respect for different worldviews and identities are crucial in preventing misinterpretations and resolving conflicts. Um, they are therefore crucial for lasting peace and, if you wish, happiness. <laughs> and being uh, myself German, I strongly feel the responsibility to ensure that we do value cultural diversity and that we make sure that history does not repeat itself. 
So while the value of intercultural dialogue and cooperation is so obvious for us here, its benefits might not be readily seen in different settings. And uh, being a professor at a University of Applied Science in a region which right now undergoes serious economic transformation related to job structure and globalization, I'm frequently in touch with different entrepreneurs and businesses in the region, um, especially small scale um, businesses. And I often encounter situations in which um, I get the feedback that cultural diversity and interreligious dialogue are seen by those entrepreneurs and by those businesses as a mere luxury or nice to have. <laughs> And this puzzles me immensely. Um, the research has shown that intercultural communication and cultural diversity are key factors for economic prosperity, for lasting competitiveness, and for sustainable businesses. And in fact, embracing cultural diversity has several significant positive effects for businesses. And let me outline a few pieces of evidence that does exist without, you know, citing any literature, but just to give you some ideas of what the, um, let's say, the advantages um, of cultural diversity, of embracing cultural diversity uh, for businesses is. So, for example, um, nowadays, many companies in Germany and other regions in the world, they encounter a shortage of, uh, shortage of skilled um, workers. So we do, um, or many, many companies in Germany, and I'm, I'm sure that in some of your countries where you base, this is also the case, um, there is a need to have skilled workers um, in the economy. And promoting cultural diversity really helps to attract suitable candidates for posts. And a business that embraces culture will be able to help new employees to integrate well and adjust quickly into their new workplace. This is kind of the first um, piece of evidence. In addition, evidence has shown Sorry, evidence has shown that culturally diverse teams, so if, if a team is made up of people with different cultural backgrounds, maybe also different languages, this team works more creatively. Um, they are prone to have more innovative ideas and they also work more efficiently. Okay, and this is well established um, in the literature. And furthermore, more cultural diversity in the workforce simplifies international customer relations. Now you ask why? Well, because if you have um, a person or if you have a, a culturally diverse team, you might have a person in your team with specific culture knowledge or language skills needed for a specific market. And last, diversity can have a positive external impact. So for example, um, there were studies that have shown that companies who embrace cultural diversity are perceived as an attractive employer. They gain more credibility um, and they benefit from a positive brand identification. So with all this evidence in mind, it seems obvious that relegating intercultural cooperation to a low priority will harm businesses and put them at, at the risk of becoming less, competitiveness, uh, less competitive, less profitable, and therefore less sustainable. And maybe here I should very quickly talk about what I mean with sustainability or sustainable business. 
because very often sustainability, the word, is associated with a focus on environmental sustainability. But actually what has become more and more apparent and is also recognized by the political agenda, for example, in the EU where uh, Germany is a part of, um, is that social sustainability becomes an important part and key driver for lasting economic competitiveness. And cultural diversity is an important and recognized part of this social sustainability. So now that we established that cultural diversity is a key factor for economic prosperity, another question or kind of the question I would like to ask now is what societies and governments can do to foster intercultural cooperation and interfaith dialogue. And well, obviously being here today is a wonderful way of getting together um, a lot of very dedicated people and spreading information on this topic. In addition, as Rias has already said, in Baraza, we developed um, uh, educational programs uh, called Unity or Unity for Next Gen that help to promote the positive aspects of integration and to empower students to value equality and diversity in their communities. And also, um, I'm teaching at my university in a master program, which is called Interculturalist Business Psychology. And here we place uh, a strong focus on intercultural cooperation. And based on my teaching experience, I can say that it's very important to teach young people the benefits of opening up to people with a different cultural background, to becoming aware of um, one's own stereotypes and limitations and assumptions. And successful collaboration in intercultural teams require an awareness of how um, other cultures perceive, feel, think, and act. And a high level of empathy, cultural sensitivity, and understanding is a prerequisite for this. So to ensure that cultural diversity will contribute to socially sustainable economies, governments should therefore include in the school curriculum uh, training sessions on intercultural competence, on understanding of uh, one's own prejudice and stereotypes, and on learning how to act sensitively in intercultural situations. And um, I think I'm going to stop here. Um, I'm very excited to also uh, hear what the second speaker will say, and then we can, uh, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions you might have. And thank you already very much for listening to my very short speech. Yeah, round of virtual applause. Yeah, thank you very much. This was um, very nice, but I was having feeling, okay, you just started and I was eager to, to listen what is coming, but I'm looking forward to our Q&A session where everyone who is here will be able to discuss more on this important topic. But I think in today's so diverse world with so many migration and people coming from different parts of the world to other countries, it is so important to discuss about this topic and thank you for this introduction and all your work. And now we are from Germany going to the Spain, to the Barcelona where our dear colleague Elizabeth is joining us from and she will also give her input on this topic, maybe from different perspectives, she's, since she's coming from different backgrounds. She's part of our dear Audir uh, CC uh, from Barcelona, and uh, she was a former URI Europe Global Council trustee, and recently she received quite important and prestige award from the government, from the Catalan government, if I'm correct. So, and we will also paste her rich biography in a chat, so you will be able to read more about impressive work that she's doing for so many years, both in URI but outside of URI. And Elizabeth, it is our great pleasure to have you with us on this webinar. So, floor is yours, and we are really looking forward to hear your presentation and insight on this interesting topic. So many thanks, uh, Laila, for this 
uh, introduction. And really, it's a great honor to be uh, here today and to reconnect with all my friends from uh, from URI. Um, from URI Europe and URI International. Thank you so much. If I have to say that um, I had a bit of difficulty with the title of the webinar because economic is not my uh, my topic. Uh, so first of all, in fact, I thought about the World Day of um, for Cultural Diversity and Dialogue in, uh, and Development, which is um, um, which is happening every year in May. And uh, UNESCO is uh, leading uh, this uh, this international world day. But uh, in fact, I realized that uh, we are talking about the framework of uh, a world inter interfaith harmony week. So we have really to um, center for me. It was obvious that I would center it in uh, interfaith dialogue. And um, of course, a um, lot of academic and public policy circle um, do not um, give religion a role in development. They don't even um, um, see religion as a factor of um, positive development. If religion mostly is uh, looked with suspicion. And a um, lot of sociologists also predicted that uh, the influence and role of uh, religion would vanish in our modern society. But it is uh, obvious now that uh, religion, religious community and faith-inspired organizations around the world are playing a very important role in the development issues. Uh, because most of the time, they are present in front line uh, of all the problems. And they are shaping um, projects uh, that, that have a lot of influences uh, in the societies where these projects are uh, are going on. For example, uh, what uh, you are doing in uh, Baraza uh, with these um, um, books for uh, students is, uh, is really um, very important. And although the um, results are not immediate, but we know that in long term, it has a very positive effect. Um, many articles um, have been written about interfaith dialogue. And all of us um, have been experimenting the interfaith dialogue. And what I was thinking today is to um, have a really a brief review in a quick telegraphic mode um, of about um, interfaith dialogue. If you remember, the interfaith dialogue uh, began as interreligious. So we were talking only people with different religious traditions. And now we are often talking about Interconvictional dialogue. So, really, uh, even the interfaith dialogue is um, opening itself to more and more diversity. I don't know why I have. Uh, okay. Um, it is very important also to remark that this dialogue is almost generally taking place in a social, secular context. And in general, it's uh, the field where it, uh, where it is happening is the city. 
So the target of interfaith uh, dialogue is mostly citizens. When it's going on a local level, we can see that local connections are increasing and that in the long term, their interaction between different uh, people from different religious backgrounds are increasing. You were talking about this important topic uh, that uh, um, the, the connection, different connections uh, are opening more and more of your opportunities. And it's very important also to uh, think about the butterfly effect, because uh, people who are connecting, for example, in an interfaith dialogue in Barcelona, um, they have families in their uh, original countries, and that, uh, of course, widen even more the, the connection. The interfaith dialogue is going on, of course, at local level, but also at international level. But anyway, most of the time, the topics are touching on global perspective uh, issues. So, at the very from the since the very beginning, the interfaith dialogue has a widened uh, vision, not only. A, um, um, closed vision in the local uh, issues, but more global issues. Uh, how the religious tradition and interfaith dialogue uh, promote uh, the, the um, friendship and working together um, of course, this is a very uh, important question because we know that uh, interfaith uh, dialogue contributes to a stronger social cohesion. And this has been uh, uh, studied in a lot of uh, papers and we have a lot of papers about, about uh, the social cohesion. Um, the, how interfaith dialogue contribute to social cohesion. But there are some prior questions we have to ask. For example, how would we define a social cohesion? We can identify some elements of social exclusion. For example, poverty, to be a foreigner, uh, to have lack of education, the point is that religion is also a critical element of social exclusion. So interfaith dialogue helps to erase this kind of uh, exclusion. What, another question we can ask ourselves is what holds human society together? What are the conditions required for um, arriving to a um, human society. These are questions about the possibility of um, living, a better living together. The optimal kind of society we all wish to have, peacefully, uh, harmony, harmonical, and all these things. These are the questions which underline so much our contemporary life anywhere in the world. In a global environment, lacking of hope and unfortunately filled with fear and anxiety. Interfaith dialogue is situated in a cross uh, point of all the need of um, any individual, the spiritual needs and the material needs. So for some people, uh, interfaith dialogue is only utilitarian. 
for other interfaith dialogue is really a spiritual aspiration. Maybe it's both of them. Probably it's both of them. We each, all of us, have our own belief, faith, national origin, ethnicity, background, families, studies, ex own experiences. And this diversity is the beauty, in fact, of our humanity. And sharing this diversity is even more beautiful. The dialogue is not an easy process. It requires love, kindness, compassion, moral courage, and humility. It also means respect and positive reception of the cultural and religious uniqueness that comes with those relationships. But what probably is more fascinating for me is that interfaith dialogue brings together people with very, very different origins, beliefs, studies, social status, etc. In our um, interfaith dialogue group, we are meeting people we would never meet in any other place. And we learn to appreciate each other and to know better each other and to connect each other with other people also. So it's not a closed um, interfaith um, dialogue group, but it's widening each time more and more because we uh, see the need of action with others. What makes the interfaith dialogue group unique is because we are talking about intercultural empathy. It's about talking heart to heart, working um, hand to, to hand together to make uh, really a brotherhood a society and a peaceful environment. Um, in Baha'i faith, we are talking about unity and diversity, um, which means unity without uniformity and diversity without uh, fragmentation or disintegration. What is the most important is that uh, we put the individual in the heart of the dialogue. And individuals are the key point for any change and any uh, sustainable uh, cohesion society. Uh, so probably this is the best result of uh, the interfaith dialogue is to go back to the individual, to the individuals, so they can change their communities, which can also change their society and their whole environment. Also, round of the virtual applause for our dear Elizabeth. And I think that, yeah, I thank you very much for this presentation. As I said, you offer us completely different perspective on the same topic and share some very important inputs from the grassroots level and interfeed movement and understanding that I think even though when I propose you to be speaker and when I share the topic, as you said at the beginning, you were not really happy. And then I said, yeah, you have complete freedom to share whatever you would like from this perspective, because I knew that your contribution will be uh, very important. And it was definitely, and you were really fitting nicely into topic itself, uh, providing some very important insights. Uh, now we'll open floor for the question and answer. We have pretty much more or less 20 minutes till the end, which is quite nice amount of time. And I see that already Dr. Anke would like to say something, so please. You raise your hand, so floor is yours. 
Thank you so much. Um, Elizabeth, uh, thank you so much for your topic. I just wanted to try to link maybe our two uh, viewpoints, um, at least uh, try to attempt this, and then um, I'm giving the floor to everyone else. Um, but I think your, your, um, your statement that religion does not play a role or very often a role in development and that interfaith dialogue is very often, let's say, confined to certain settings. I think it's a very acute uh, observation. And, um, but on the other hand, you, you correctly pointed out that uh, interfaith dialogue is very important uh, for social cohesion. So what, um, what I would take uh, from your talk and then try to link it to mine is kind of the need to expand this interfaith dialogue. And I think one very obvious setting might be where people from different uh, religions and, and uh, cultural backgrounds come together, which is the workplace. Um, and then let me just point out, I think, and, and you said it also, interfaith dialogue is not, it's not easy. So I think we also have to work on people having the tools to actually render this interfaith dialogue successful. So let me stop here, but thank you very much for your input. Yeah, thank you. And you really like nicely linked your two presentations. So Elizabeth, would you like to add anything on that point before opening the floor to others? Yes, many thanks, uh, Dr. Anke. In fact, the, the point is that academic view do not link religious diversity and development. But the truth is that we see, we are um, testimony of that uh, it's not, it's not uh, true. So how can we change the academic view? Because the, the important problem is that as the academic view is the, uh, the view which will uh, lead to uh, new policies. Um, so we need to have also this table. Yeah, yeah, you are right, Elizabeth. It's always the question how how to, to find middle ground between the, the academia and policymakers and us who are mainly working on a grassroots level and facing everyday issues in our diverse contexts and communities. So this is very important and we can continue discussion in that direction. But I saw that Sabina raised her hand and she would like to ask or comment. So Sabina, floor is yours. Um, okay, good evening. I hope you can hear me. My network has been a little bit unstable. Um, and thank you very much to the speakers for the presentation. Um, so I am from Africa. I'm in the Southern Africa right now. And um, as Prof was presenting, there are things that uh, came to, to light that I thought maybe I would need more clarity, especially when um, she touched on the issue of um, cultural diversity in uh, sustainable economies. Um, so th th I kind of lost in that part because, um, sorry, I see here it's how it says I've switched to a different language, which I I didn't. Uh, it says I'm in Portuguese. Okay. All right. No, so we can hear you. Okay. All right. So um, I, my mind just got stolen, but I, I'm I'm trying to bring it back. So okay, so in in a, in a, in a context of where we are, which is in the southern African region, where uh, we are fighting for resources, and unlike in the Europe, uh, this a skill is welcome, skills diverse skill is more welcome than here in Africa. It's actually the opposite because somebody bringing in a skill means uh, they are lessening the opportunities of someone to 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 get a job or to 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 make a living. Uh, so the competition of 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 um, resources uh, plays a big role. Then the second uh, question uh, that I had was, um, you said in building um, building the economy, there's always a question to say whose economy are we talking about? 
especially in a space where uh, someone has migrated. Take, for example, uh, South Africa and Zimbabwe right now. I personally migrated from Zimbabwe and I'm living in South Africa. And there's always a question to say, which economy is benefiting with, 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 with the skill? Because are you then developing back home or is it the taxes? So when we talk about the developing of the economy, what exactly are we talking about? Then um, I think Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth, uh, if I got her name correctly, I, I, I kind of lost network here and there, but I think she was talking about something that is very close to heart for me, um, the interfaith dialogues. Um, so I, I just wanted to, to also ask the, in terms of also bringing it back to Africa, where we, we already have another kind of common religion, which is the African religion. And then now we have other religions to kind of top to the already common African religion that is ground that 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 grounds that grounds everyone regardless of which African uh, nationality you are in, and which plays a role in where people can meet, where people can dialogue because some people cannot step in a church, some cannot step in a mosque, some cannot be under a tree. So uh, maybe if I could find out as to how one can do that, because it's also a space that I'm really trying, considering that we are having a lot of religions and, and cultures that we're trying to bring together, but every time the space is not, uh, one cannot agree on the spaces. Thank you, and I hope my network did justice. Thank you very much for raising some very, very important issues. So Dr. Anke and Elizabeth, would you like to reflect on some things that Sabina just shared? Yeah, yeah, please. Yes, thank you so much for your comment. Um, I mean, obviously I should say that um, uh, what um, cultural diversity encompasses um, really depends on where you do live. Um, I mean, I, I think this is this is well understood. And if you're from South Africa, it might be the situation or the composition of people um, um, are very different, or it might be very different from the situation where um, where I am. Maybe I should say um, my understanding of uh, cultural diversity is very broad. Um, so it uh, it does obviously. Um, comprise a, a diverse religious um, aspect, um, but also um, gender. It also um, includes people with uh, a migration background, uh, which you mentioned. Um, so culture for me is really a very uh, broad construct, um, which um, does include religion, but is not confined to religion. Maybe I should say this. Um, in terms of economy, I'm, I'm, uh, I think that's, that's a very valid point. Um, I think in the, um, let's say, my, uh, again, my idea of uh, economy or why I'm talking about economic prosperity is not necessarily about um, um, businesses or entrepreneurs, but the people that live in a country and that benefit from um, from an economy. Uh, again, this, this might very, um, very much depend on um, your country, the structure of the economy, and also how uh, maybe there might be some distribution of benefits of the economy to different parts of the population. So very well received. Thank you so much for your input. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, Elizabeth, please, you can share yeah, your reflection and then we have question, some more questions. Very uh, quickly about the, the safe a space for interfaith uh, uh, dialogue. I mean, it, it, there is no safe space. I mean, uh, but in fact, the truth is that living in cities uh, where um, uh, uh, which are secular, the best thing is to find a secular space. Uh, for example, offered by uh, uh, the town hall or something like that. And then little by little, people would know each other. If, if this was your question, uh, I don't know if this was a really um, 
talking about real space, I mean, uh, place. Uh, and then people will visit each other and will uh, go to know each other. But it's long uh, way um, job. <laughs> and just one thing I was thinking when uh, Dr. Anke was uh, talking about the um, importance of diversity in uh, in uh, a country. Um, I was thinking that now, for example, in Spain, uh, the last uh, data we had is that thanks to immigration, natality, natality you say, is almost equilibrated. Almost equilibrated, thanks to immigration. If not, the uh, population is getting older and older. There is no uh, new baby. I mean, Spanish um, family has less and less baby. Yeah, yeah, Elizabeth. Thank you for sharing some interesting observation that I think all of us can share from our countries. So I saw that Janan, if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, if not, please correct me. Uh, you raise your hands, so please share your question or comment, whatever. Yes. Dear all, I have a question. Can one religion communicate with another religion? Can they hug each other? Can they talk with each other? Never. But the people can do it. We must teach at the school our kids how you communicate with the others. It doesn't matter which color, which religion, which social level. We must teach them how can we be a world citizen. We share the same world and everybody wants to be happy with yourself with everybody with others but what are we doing we separate them you are catholic you are muslim you are buddhist why is religion so important it is privacy and so many persons, so many religions. Nobody has the same religion, same faith. In a family, even though everybody has another religion, religion is a pretty privacy. What is religion? To be, be nice to yourself, be nice to others, be nice to the planet. This is religion. And how you pray, it is my own business. I was for three weeks in Tibet. We made Kailash pilgrim. And I couldn't understand how can they do it. Three mounds, they go around this mountain three steps on the ground, standing up, once again, three steps, the legs, backs. Is it religion? Buddhism was for me a nice religion, a calm religion. If there is some rules like that, it is not nice to myself. At the end, they are done. Religion must help us to be happy and help us be happy with another. It must be begin at the school. Who are you? Who am I? We have the same soul. We have the same bread. But we are not looking like everybody to each other the same. To accept this difference is religion. To love this difference is religion. For that reason, we 
established the second, the first organization where was uh, Netzwerk Bildung und Religion. It means networking, education, and religion. And we connect all the uh, educational uh, heroes and also religion heroes. But we made conferences, speakers. It is not better now. I think the second one is reconnecting humans. We must connect the peoples to each other. It doesn't matter which religion, which color, which nation, which language. It is very simple. And it is successful. I was one month in Afghanistan to teach the school to school peace education. The teachers were happy, the students were happy, parents were happy. What happened? After a few months came Taliban, closed all the girls' schools. They are Muslim to Muslim, you know? With religion, we have no success. We must change our way. Heart to heart, soul to soul, people to people. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. I think we can spend probably next hour reflecting on all things that, that you share with us. But what I can say from my own perspective, I think that you are on the right safe place to share your thoughts. And I think that United Religion Initiative and Baraza work is somehow can offer you answer to some of the question because those are people on the grassroots level that Elizabeth highlighted nicely in her presentation. I really coming as a human beings to each other, close to by their hearts, hand in hand, heart by heart, overcoming all stereotypes, prejudice and differences and working together towards peace, justice and healing in this world. So I think that at least what I can say, I think that URI and Baraza work can be answered to some of your questions or maybe prayers or wishes for the world. I will uh, give floor to the Martin since he also has his hand up and we have just few extra minutes so martin please share your thoughts and then we can hear, fi hear final thoughts from our speakers and to conclude this meeting so martin please good thank you everybody thank you for organizing it um first is just some information uh, i'm not part of this organization i'm about to uh uh, explain, but it's called the Religious Freedom and Business Foundation. I'm going to put their, yeah, I just put their uh, website in the uh, in the chat, and it's an organisation that is basically working for uh, religious diversity and equity and inclusion in the workplace. And so it fits into this whole um, discussion, I think, and it provides toolkits and other advice and uh, and so on in this area. So um, I'm I just put it there for everybody, anybody to look at and see if it's useful. The other point I wanted to make was that besides being a member of the All Face Network, I'm a member of. Uh, an African development organization called IDO, which is a, a tech or international development organization, and which has a strong, which has an emphasis on culture and bringing the diaspora and mainly sort of Western diaspora together with Africa. And so I'm very interested to know what more tools because it also has, a, I should also say, it also has a, a business uh, function. So not only has it got a strong cultural emphasis, it's also got uh, a business arm to kind of link Western businesses with African uh, continent. And so I'm very interested to know more what I can uh, feed into the organization uh, I'm I'm the human rights and interfaith advisor for the organisation. Uh, what I can feed into it, uh, especially from uh, Anchor's 
um, research and, and so on. So I, I'm going to put my email in there in the chat. So, um, so that, you know, for the future, uh, you know, I might be able to feed things into IDO and use it in different ways. So that's, uh, Great. you can, of course, respond to that, but that's my point so I wanted to make. Great. Yeah. Uh, it's great that we come to some concrete action that can, that can happen sharing website. Please share your contact details and stay in contact. Idea is just to inspire each other to get the sparkle going and to start discussion and then just we will share contact details so that you can continue this discussion and potential collaboration. Uh, we are on top of the hour and we mentioned that this webinar will be an hour, but please, Dr. Anke and Elizabeth, you can, if you can conclude in a few seconds, your presentations, like there's some final words. Yes, as final words are always very difficult if uh, they are very diverse, but also very, very interesting input from the audience. So uh, let me maybe uh, conclude by saying thank you very much um, from my side for this very incredible, um, interesting input uh, from different perspectives. Um, and if there, um, you know, if you feel like you would like to collaborate and 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 maybe continue our discussion. Um, maybe Rias, if you could um, put in the chat the, the president at Baraza. I'm, I'm not, um, let's say, 100% firm with it now because I just took over the presidency. But if you would like to, um, you know, continue the discussion, um, I'm, I'm more than welcome uh, to uh, do this via email. And um, yes, thank you very much. And maybe I'll leave uh, the, the last minutes to Elizabeth. Thank you, Dr. Anke. Elizabeth, please. Thank you so much. And no, the only thing maybe I could uh, say in the Zoom to conclude is that, uh, in, yes, the truth is that we have to put the individual the, at the center of, uh, of any uh, project uh, we would like to have uh, to construct a better world. Uh, because at the very end, it's the individual who has to, um, um, who will be benefit, who, who will have the benefit of the project and who will execute the project. And we see that how URI is in fact working with the people. And this is, uh, this is really um, unique. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. I think we can conclude with this beautiful message from your side. Once again, big thank you to Dr. Anke and Elizabeth for uh, your presentations. I'm sorry that we didn't have enough time to start this long discussion on some of the topics and insights shared by our participants, but thank you all of you for making your time to join us this morning, afternoon, or evening. Please consider joining ERI and checking Baraza uh, incredible resources and website if you still didn't do that, didn't have chance to do that. And I will just give floor to Drias and Angelina if you would like to thank our participants on behalf of Baraza and URI Europe. So Riaz. Thank you, Leila. Colleagues, friends, uh, thank you ever so much. One of the delights of running these webinars is that we are able to connect so many people from around the world in one place. Uh, and there is a powerful humanity in that uh, whilst we may not be able to meet each other physically, uh, humanity will always find a way. And uh, the fact that we are here tonight is testimony for, uh, I guess, the way in which human ingenuity can uh, continue to advance uh, peace and goodwill in this world. And so I very much um, appreciate your time. You're all very busy and uh, we are all very committed to uh, advancing peace and good relations around the world. So thank you ever so much for attending. I'm very, very grateful to all of you and we we'll hope to see you soon at some point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Riaz and Angelina, please. Yes, thank you, Leila. I would like to thank all of you for joining us this evening. This was very rich and very inspiring webinar as well for me and for all of us. And I, I would add on, only may peace prevail on earth. Thank you for your participations and have a nice evening, all of you. Thank you all. Thank you. Check Thank your you. inboxes Bye. for more.
update information coming bye. and yeah, let's bye. stay in contact and continue this discussion. Oh, Take bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you all.